Good morning and welcome to our coverage from AWS reInvent 2017. We're live in the expo, which you can see behind us. Significantly upgraded studio in comparison to yesterday when we were in pretty much a cupboard outside the hackathon. So we've got much nicer accommodations today. And this is the first one of our launches in the Twitch broadcasting program here at reInvent. Just to quickly recap, if you're not familiar with AWS reInvent, this is the Amazon Web Services Global User Education Conference. We're in Las Vegas. We're live here on Twitch until uh, Thursday, yeah? Every day. And uh, we have around 43,000 people here at the conference. Um, we're going to be broadcasting a variety of different content on Twitch over the course of the next few days. And the anchor of the content, of course, is launches with the AWS reInvent Launchpad. And we're going to do the first one of those right now. So. Chris, maybe you'd like to introduce yourself. Randall, maybe you'd like to introduce yourself as well. Sure. I'll go first. My name is Randall. I'm just a software engineer and developer evangelist here at Amazon Web Services. Uh, I'm just here to, to, to write some code and be funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Chris Munns. I'm a developer advocate for serverless here at AWS. Uh, here to help customers learn how to build applications in this new world that is serverless, uh, Lambda API Gateway and related things. Awesome, great stuff. And for those of you that are not familiar with those terms, we're going to get back to basics in a second and mm -hmm. Chris is going to explain a little bit more about what these services are and how developers can use them. But the first big question that we need to ask in every one of these Launchpad segments is of course, what are you announcing today, Chris? Yep. So maybe you can give us a quick summary yeah, of your we're, announcement. We're, uh, we're launching a, a number of capabilities today across a couple different services. Uh, so the first that I'll talk about a little bit here is Amazon API Gateway Canary support. Yep. And we'll talk about in AWS Lambda the ability to do weighted aliases. And then lastly, we'll talk about code deploy support for uh, Lambda and these weighted aliases as well, launching later this week. Okay, so let's just wind back a bit, as I said, for viewers that might not be that, well, mm -hmm. might not be familiar with AWS, but certainly might not be familiar with terms like AWS Lambda and sure. API Gateway. Can you uh, just briefly describe in simple terms what those services are? Uh, for example, what is AWS Lambda? What mm -hmm. role does the API, API Gateway play in application mm -hmm. development? And most importantly, I guess, for this launch, what exactly is a Canary deployment? Absolutely, <laughs> a lot of things to cover. So. We'll start talking about uh, Amazon API Gateway. So Amazon API Gateway is a, a managed API Gateway service, as the yep. name might imply. Uh, how customers are using this is as a, a way to front or provide APIs out to their customers, out to mobile applications, out to microservices, and what it does is provide a number of capabilities that basically simplifies the management of running an API. For example, taking care of things such as authorization, authentication, throttling, caching, a uh, number of different capabilities. And realistically, if you're building an API today, having an API gateway as the kind of the entry into your API is, is a, a standard best practice, I would yep. say. Yep. Then what we have is AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is the core of the serverless world for us here at AWS. It is a compute product that is very different from any other compute product traditionally. Um, so we consider Lambda what we call a serverless product. What is it that makes it serverless? So with Lambda, you manage no servers yourself, nothing to patch, nothing to manage. Uh, you only pay for what you're using on a millisecond basis. Yep. Um, so it's a very different paradigm. And basically what you do is you have your code, you send it up to Lambda, it handles all the capacity, all the scaling for you uh, for you know, potentially very massive scale applications. And we have customers using this to build web applications, we have customers using this to back mobile applications, chat bots, doing streaming analysis, all sorts of different workloads. Yep. Um, and then uh, lastly, what Canary deploys are, and what weighted aliases will support, which is very similar, is the ability for developers when they're launching their applications and modifying them to roll out their changes in small incremental bits. It's actually based on a, a fairly standard best practice across the industry, which is when you're going to launch a new version of your application, instead of basically tossing it whole hog over the wall, rolling it out incrementally to a small percentage of your, your user's traffic, um, being able to monitor and see how that new change is performing, and then if it looks good, completely pushing it out to everyone. If maybe it's not quite right or you have something you need to fix, being able to quickly roll that back without having to potentially impact all of your customers. So it's a, a, a pretty good recommendation from, uh, from most people to use Canary or do Canary deploys, and Witty Aliases will support that as well. Okay, so is that the main uh, problem area that you're trying to help customers with with this launch? It's mm -hmm. simplifying the process of doing these 
uh, small scale initial deployments that then come form part of a testing pipeline. Mm -hmm. Are there any other uh, deployment options that these new features enable? Can you talk about some of those different deployment options for us maybe? Yeah, so you know, we see customers moving very rapidly these days doing continuous integration and continuous development of their applications. And when you're doing this in such a rapid way, you obviously want to have the assurance that your application changes are not going to be harmful to your customers. So there, there are kind of two main concepts. We've talked a little about canaries, and the idea here is you're going to, again, deploy the change out to some small percentage of your traffic of your customers, five, 10%, maybe 1%, all kind of depends on the load. With weighted aliases and Lambda, which allows you to do the same thing as well, another thing we often see people doing is what's called blue-green deployments. So this might be where you throw out the uh, traffic that's coming into a larger percentage, maybe 50% of your traffic, and then have the ability to kind of flop over completely to the rest of that as well. So from a developer's perspective, this gives you a lot more flexibility in how you release your applications. You can allow you to release applications in a much more uh, safe and, and kind of assured way that your applications not get impact your customers. And so opposed to today, how it is where you would launch entirely to you know, all of your traffic and all of your customers, this is going to help our a lot. Okay, let's just dive into the difference between uh, the Canary deployments in the API gateway mm -hmm. and this idea of weighted aliases within AWS Lambda. In what circumstances would I use the weighted aliases within AWS Lambda? Is that for mm -hmm. non-API based in invocations of mm -hmm. those functions, is that it? Yep, absolutely. So, uh, again, effectively what we're announcing for both of these products does more or less the same thing in, in more or less kind of very similar ways. Um, where you would use one or the other, so A is obviously if you're using Lambda outside of API Gateway. So yep. AWS Lambda can be connected to uh, almost two dozen different services inside of AWS today. Everything from uh, Amazon Kinesis, which is our data streaming service, to database services, to messaging services. And so if you want to roll out, again, percentage-based changes to those, this is where weighted aliases can become very useful to you. And again, you have the ability to say that an, an alias, which in Lambda is the ability to reference a certain version of your function, yep. um, to say that this version right now is going to get 10% of all requests to my new alias, and then the rest of it will go to the existing one. Okay, so I can use it with my Amazon Lex chatbots or in my uh, real-time streaming analysis mm -hmm. functions that I've got hooked into Kinesis Absolutely. for those services. Yeah. Absolutely, and what you'll get is, as part of this, uh, separated logs, separated metrics, so you can really easily identify if something wasn't going well with this deployment. Okay. Okay, and you can see that in the console? You can see that directly in the console, correct. Cool. Uh, speaking of the console, can you show us uh, the console experience and how customers yeah. will get started with this service? Can we take a look at Chris's screen? So we'll start here, we're right in the AWS console. What I'm going to do is jump ahead a little bit here to API Gateway. Now what I have here in API Gateway is an API actually from a demo application that you can go and find in GitHub uh, called SAM Farm. And so what I have right now are two different stages inside of this application, or inside this API gateway. I have a prod and then a stage stages. Stages you could think of as being either environmental stages or versions between my API. Now I'm here in the production stage, and what I have now in this interface is a new tab here for canaries. And so what this is going to allow me to do is when I create a new deployment, it will allow me to shift the traffic again to this new version of the deployment that I'm doing in this stage. So I can see here that I've said go ahead and create, and then I can set that I'm going to send this to roughly 10% of the requests that are coming in. That's so Now cool. at this point, nothing has actually changed because I haven't done a deployment. Now I'm going to go and modify this a little bit and then go and, and push that out. So I'm going to go up to the resources tab here, and now I'm going to configure this function. Now right now this function has no authentication. I'm going to purposefully make a bad change to this and say that I'm going to add API key authentication. Now, normally, if I really wanted to do this, I would set up API keys and you know, use this as an uh, authorization model. In this case, just to demonstrate a change happening. So I've made a change, and now what I'm actually going to go and do is deploy my API again. I'm going to pick my production stage, which has Canary enabled, and just say, adding API keys. Now, this is going to go out and make the deployment of this new version of my API happen behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And what would happen is 10% of the traffic to my API would assume that it was looking for an API key. Now, again, I haven't configured a client or anything to do that, so hypothetically, it, it would fail. Had I configured it, it would pass. Yep. Now, now, assuming that everything goes well, I've waited some period of time, I've let this you know, effectively bake, I could then go and promote this canary, which will make this the official version and configuration of my API. Or if things don't go well, I could just very easily delete this canary. 
another thing that I could do is actually say, well, you know what? I've tested it for 10% of the traffic. Things have gone well. Let me go ahead and bump this up to 25%. Maybe I'm confident that this is looking good and now I have the ability to change this. And so very easily I can increment and step through the amount of traffic going to this API gateway stage and confirm that uh, my change is not impacting my customers in a negative way. Okay, great. There's a question on the Twitch chat here, and I just remind uh, viewers on Twitch that you can submit questions via Twitch chat at any time. We've got off-screen moderators that are getting the questions to us so that we can answer your questions live. And I think you might have some code which answers this question, Chris, which is about ca canary updating of APIs that are built into SAM. So is this supported within the SAM templating mm -hmm. language right now? Not yet today. Okay. So SAM, which stands for Serverless Application Models, is a template-driven tool for deploying serverless applications. Uh, this new uh, release today is not yet in SAM, uh, but definitely something that is in the works to happen. Okay, great stuff. Thanks, Bundy FX1, for that question. We also have another question from IAVH3Z, which is, is there some overlap with the ALB feature set here? Say again? Uh, we have another question from IAVH3Z, which is, is there some overlap with the ALB feature set? Uh, this is unrelated to ALB. Yeah. yeah. So let me show uh, Lambda real quick, show the experiences there. Yep. So inside of Lambda, you have uh, Lambda functions, which can have versions, which can then have aliases assigned to them. And typically what you would then do is take the uh, product that is going to invoke Lambda and potentially point it at an alias. So aliases could be things such as uh, dev staging prod, mm -hmm. um, you know, prod one, prod two, various versions like that. Now I'm going to pull up the same Lambda function actually affiliated with the demo that I was showing before. And what I have currently is a version that is deployed with an alias that's assigned to it. And I can actually go and, and see the alias that exists for this function um, as, as part of the configuration. Now what we've done here with the weighted aliases is I can now go and say create an alias. I can name this and we'll just call it uh, release oops, v2. Uh, I'll give the same description to it. The version here I will use is latest. So latest is, as it may sound, the latest version of this function. And I'm going to shift traffic between the current version, which is version 1. So I've published a static version, which I'm calling version 1. Now I'm going to be launching version 2 effectively. And what I get to do is set the weight between these. So very similar to how I did it with, um, with API Gateway. I get to set the, the amount of traffic that's going to go to this one. So I, I want to go ahead and say that I'm only going to send, sorry, only going to send 10% of traffic to the old one. I'm going to go much further into the new one. I can go ahead and say create, and then that will shift it. Yep. Oops. Oh, more than one version. So this will go ahead and shift the traffic. And then what happens is you do nothing on the client side. As traffic is coming in, it's going to go and uh, be routed based on the percentage that I've set to the proper version and be executed accordingly. Yeah, I really like that feature. I can see how I'm going to use that myself with some of my chatbot work that I'm doing. That's awesome. So what about usage of these uh, features inside a CI CD pipeline? If I was automating mm -hmm. deployments, how would I work with these particular services yep. using automated tooling? Absolutely, and that's exactly what this is uh, designed for. So in the world where people are doing continuous integration and delivery and they are constantly iterating and moving quickly with their applications, the ability to deploy out to some percentage of a fleet of traffic, make sure that things are going well, and then eventually push it out to all of them is, is exactly what our customers want to do. And so uh, inside of a you know, pretty straightforward continuous delivery pipeline, you would probably have your initial deploy to the uh, percentage of your traffic that you wanted it to go to. Mm -hmm. And then you could have either something that's waiting to look to see if there are failures or issues that you might want to roll back on, um, or potentially be digesting logs and metrics to automate that process, and then at some point push all the way through into 100% of the traffic going to that new version. Okay, great. Uh, we're running out of time here. We've got about six minutes or so left in this segment. So if you've got any more questions on the stream, please get those two to us right, through to us right now so that we can uh, put them to Chris. And I will say this is an amazing opportunity to ask questions because Chris knows everything about this service. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Uh, what about the code deploy yeah. uh, features? Do you want to talk briefly about those? Yeah, let's talk briefly about code deploy. So code deploy is a tool that's been around here at AWS for a couple of years, primarily used for deploying applications into EC2 or traditional compute-based environments. Yep. Uh, what we're announcing this week is that code deploy is being extended 
extended to support Lambda. And so what you'll be able to do with code deploy now is uh, do this deployments out to uh, weight shifted uh, aliases inside of Lambda, mm -hmm. and it will actually automate the complete process for you. So the ability to decide what the initial amount of traffic is that you want to roll out to, set a, a wait period or a uh, alarm to potentially cause a rollback if things were to fail, and then after it's past that wait period or things haven't failed, then push out to the entirety of the traffic that you want to take on. And so all this can be automated for you inside of Code Deploy. So you're using Code Deploy templates for that, I guess, and there's just an extension to the schema there that enables you to do that? It's an extension to the schema, yeah. So actually, that's, a, that's really great. Let me bring up here in my laptop what this looks like. So, uh, we talked briefly before about SAM, which is serverless application models, and we're actually extending SAM this week as part of these releases for Lambda-weighted aliases and then the code deploy support. So uh, I'll, I'll start with the most relevant part here, which is down below at the bottom of this. Let me make it a little bit bigger. What we can see here is a number of new capabilities inside of SAM. We see this concept uh, called auto-publish alias. This means that it's always going to create an alias based on me deploying this function. And then we have a deployment preference. And so this here says linear 10% every 10 minutes. As that might sound, what it's going to do is linearly ramp up the traffic going to the new version of my function 10% every 10 minutes yep. until it's reached so what it's supposed to. So 100 minutes I'm fully deployed, yeah. And then what I have is two alarms that I want to watch for. So potentially alarms based on failure rates or maybe latency inside of my function. If either of these alarms were to trip, it will actually stop, then it could potentially roll back this deploy. Great, excellent. Um, and then lastly, there are two hooks that I have capable here, uh, pre-traffic and post-traffic, where I can actually invoke other Lambda functions as part of my deploy process. The last thing I'll show in here, because I scrolled by it really quickly, another section that we're adding to SAM is this section called Globals. And for customers where they have a number of SAM function resources inside yep. of their template, there could sometimes be some redundancy in the certain things that they are specifying for configuration. Yep. You could actually put these into globals and apply to all of the functions. So send them at the top level of the namespace and then they apply yep. down to all and of the resources. And it will really yeah. simplify the work that people are doing inside of their templates. Yeah, yeah we like reducing the amount of code we've got to write. Yeah. Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> this, is, this is kind of, I mean, th this 10, li ramp up linearly 10% every 10 minutes basically mm -hmm. makes Lambda a, a, a platform where you can experiment with, in production with mm -hmm. a new uh, function. And then if anything goes wrong, it, it'll just, yep. without you being paged, take care of it. Yep, and we've, we've got a number of these uh, um, uh, deployment types or that you can specify that are built into the platform as we're launching it. And so again, depending on how sure you are that things are going to be deployed you know, safely, i.e. the ability to kind of tweak them to this as necessary. Great, so we've got a couple of minutes left. Please keep submitting questions if you have them, but just two questions that I want to ask you to wrap up really quick, mm -hmm. Chris. First thing is, as a lot of viewers will probably know that are familiar with AWS, we have a process here that we use called working backwards for building new services. Mm -hmm. What kind of feedback led to the creation of these services? And do we have customers that are already using them today, internal within Amazon or external mm -hmm. uh, in, in the general customer population? So, uh, so I would say from a feedback perspective, since this Lambda and API Gateway launched, so Lambda was announced three years ago, yep. API Gateway was announced uh, about two and a half years ago now, uh, customers have said that they're looking for safer ways to, to test and deploy their applications. And so uh, we've heard this for a while, and so we're really happy to announce these as, as part of that. And this right. is, these were absolutely features that were based on customer feedback. Internally at Amazon, for many of our service teams, we follow this model of doing canary deploys. Um, so this is something that we internally champion and, and do as part of a large percentage of our uh, deployment strategy. And um, uh, you know, I think we'll see uh, customers be really happy in adopting this. Great, and the last question I have for you is, when are these features going to be available for customers to make use of? Yes, so uh, API Gateway Canaries and Lambda weighted aliases will be available globally by the end of today. Great. Uh, Code Deploy is rolling out throughout the week. You should be able to find it today in the console in uh, uh, San Paulo and yeah. in uh, US East 1, Virginia. Great. Uh, and then the rest of the regions by the end of the week. Fantastic, that's great. Any other questions on the stream, Randall? Yeah, we have one other question from Mabom TV, which is if I had an API gateway in front of Elastic Beanstalk environment, uh, so basically what he's asking is how would you, can you front, can you do canary deployments with things other than Lambda? Absolutely, and that's a really great question. So API Gateway is used in front of EC2 environments, in front of ECS environments, and so what you can do is, uh, as part of your new deploy, either port, uh, point certain 
uh, functions or API calls at different backend resources, yep. different versions of your application in Beanstalk, different container application versions. It'll work just the same in doing the shifting. So this will apply to any sort of backend for so API So it allows gateway. customers to transition between traditional compute-based models and Lambda-based models? That as well. Oh, very nice. That as well. Yeah, so great. you could very easily, because you could put API Gateway, even in front of uh, resources that live in a data center, yep. you could use this as part of a migration transition strategy, strategy in the cloud. Yeah. There's a ton of things that this is going to unlock. Fantastic. Okay, we're out of time there, Chris. So thanks very much for great, joining us. Thanks, guys, us. for having thanks me. Thanks for being the first launch launch battle. That's great. See you Thanks. Later. Enjoy Thank the you. rest of the week, everyone.